Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you a shell pro tip. Uh, and this is one of the things that I wish I knew earlier in programming, um, but you know, learned relatively late. But anyway, hopefully this, hopefully you don't know about this, and it will teach you something new. But let's jump into it. So how many times have you typed a command and you've been like, dang it, that's a really silly typo. Like I don't know, maybe I was going to open up my text editor and I typed you know, the text editor name wrong. And then you press, you know, up and then the arrow key a bunch of times and then, you know, backspace and then enter to, to fix it. Um, and sometimes that might not be what you want to do. Maybe you're more familiar with moving around in your text editor, or maybe the command is really long and complicated and gnarly and it's, it's easier to type it out in your text editor, or maybe it's really repetitive or something like that. Um, but there's a cool thing in Bash, if you type FC, I think this is also in Zish as well, uh, which stands for fix command, what it'll do is it will open up an editor such that you can modify that command using your text editor. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you wanted to modify a bunch of files at once and so you cut and pasted a bunch of lines and maybe, you know, you have some fancy Vim shortcut that makes this easier or whatever. Um, but you can do this all in a text editor, and then as soon as you save and quit that file, it will actually run that. So you can see it opened 17 um, t.pies here. Does this work? Did I implement that? No. And I don't think this quits them all, so we'll just quit them all one at a time. Um, but yeah, so that's that's FC. Um, and the way it works is if you have a environment variable visual, it will try and run that one first. If you don't have visual, it will, tr it will try dollar editor. And failing both of those, it will fall back to Emacs. So I think if I unset visual, unset editor, um, just making sure that that, okay. Um, I think now if I do FC, I guess it opens nano. <laughs> why did it open nano? I don't know why. Maybe it defaults to nano and not Emacs. I have no idea. Um, but uh, it probably just defaults to whatever your system editor is. But anyway, um, if you set these environment variables in your bash RC or mvrc or whatever, uh, this will this will get picked up there. Um, the other thing that I want to show you is if you're in the middle of typing a command and you realize, oh, it would be nicer if I had this in an editor to maybe modify it or something, um, that would be that's also kind of useful. Uh, I use this during advent of code. Uh, day, I don't know, day 13, where I was running uh, pytest part one. Yeah, where I was running this command, pytest part one dot py and pytest and python part one dot py. And then when I wanted to switch from part one to part two, what I did is I opened this in an editor and replaced all the ones with twos. And so FC allows you to fix the previous command. Um, but you can edit a command inline by doing control X and then E without letting go of control. So you hit control, then X, then E, um, and it will open up an editor for what you have already typed in the command line. So then I might, you know, replace one with a two and replace all and then run this really quickly. And so control X, E is like a cool way to, you know, edit the current command that you're typing in a text editor. Anyway, that's FC and Control XC. Hopefully both of these are useful. I know they've saved me a ton of time. If there's anything else you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. And thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.